So we call the meeting to order, Lisa. As required by the Open Public Meetings Act of 1975, I notice this meeting was provided on January 11, 2024, by publication of notice by the best signs at Hunter County Democrat and by posting of said notice in the further on the same date. Uh, Mayor Barksing? Here. Mr. Baylor is excused. Mr. Bean? Here. Mr. Kenyak? Here. Ms. McDermott? Here. Uh, Mr. Winner? Present. And Mr. Finelli? Here. Please stand for a I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Yeah. So I think you told everybody it's seven o'clock, Lisa, for the Earth Day stuff, I guess. So uh, I thought they were coming at six, but um, I, I wonder if they still think it's eight, seven. I mean, you know what? Bob was not coming, so I bet you Barry doesn't know. Oh, okay. You're probably right. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Budget discussions. Uh, we've more bad news for you, Andrew, right? <laughs> So since our last meeting, um, there were a couple of small changes that were made. Um, I know that there was a, a bit of discussion last meeting, but um, without having any um, action that was actually taken by the governing body, I didn't make some of those changes. So I'll go through what was discussed last time, what actually changed from last time. This way we're all on the same page for today. So I know one of the questions that had come up was the reason why the audit fee was up at 41,000, it was 37,000 last year. So I went back into my engagement letter for the audit and that amount was 38,000, um, 380, I think it was. And that's a 2% increase from the previous year. So I lowered that amount to be the same amount that you're actually going to pay. Um, I also made the adjustment for the portion of the police salaries and wages that are gonna be charged directly to the safe and secure community grant. Um, so that's taken into account. And also we moved $30,645, which was the local portion for the road project that's going to be grant funded. Um, so we moved that out into capital from inside of appropriations. Um, other than that, we talked about, I know that Bill had brought up that there was a potential of getting $4,100 back from the Board of Ed for uh, the tax collection 08. Um, I hadn't made that change yet. It's still at the 10,000 that it was um, because we didn't take any action on that. Um, we had brought up about possibly putting in the SRO salary into the police for 22,000. Um, I haven't included that yet. Uh, we are still including the 29,700 for the lawn cutting fees. That was something that um, Shannon, when we had talked about the budget, wasn't 100% sure whether or not that would be included this year or not, but it's still included as of right now. Um, and we don't have any other capital items in the budget currently other than that 30645 which is going to be our local portion for that road project. Um, as it stands right now, we're underneath the levy cap by $23,179. We're underneath the appropriation cap by $59,809. Um, currently, if you want to discuss where what that means to the average taxpayer, um, it's a 4.3 cent increase or about a 6% increase over the prior year. And for the average home assessed at $272,000, that's about $117 annually or about $9.72 a month. And I know that the mayor had asked about what it is per 100,000. So per 100,000, it's $43. So $43 for a $100,000 house, 200,000 is going to be $86, 300,000 is 129. And 400,000 is 171. <clears throat> Again, right now we're in compliance with both of the caps. Um, and I guess we have to have some discussion and make some decisions on some stuff. Andrew, um, on that school issue, I think it was like 4,100 or change. Yeah, that's the number that I had from last night. Yeah, we're going to probably reduce it down to 2213. We're going to have a discussion about that um, later on. And how much did you budget for the SRO officer? I haven't included the SRO officer as of right now. You have, have you not. Have not. Okay. Um, Steve. 
somewhere I read, I don't know, in my note right in front of me, I thought there was about 18 or 19,000 you figured through the SRO from September through the end of the year. Uh, yeah. I, you know what I don't like what I did last week, but no, it was under 20. But I don't know if he, he might not have included the I don't think we had uh, Shannon wasn't here. I don't think we had. The uh, payroll taxes included in what that right, right, right. No, so, we just added the uh, yeah. So, so I thought we estimated said, around 22. Yeah, we did. Okay, all right, so that's really not going to change. So that is not included in your okay. So, let's know the impact of putting that 22,000 in. Yeah, we're gonna whether now or later we're gonna find out. So if we put that in, we are one thousand one hundred and seventy-nine dollars below the tax levy cap, and we are thirty-seven thousand three hundred forty-four dollars below the appropriation cap, uh, which is a four point seven cent increase or six point five three percent over last year. Uh, average home that's $127 annually, and it's $47 approximately per 100,000. Rich, when you submit your budget, you don't even have the numbers in here for a police vehicle yet, correct? Correct. You have the estimates with you? Yeah, they're in here. They're in our packet. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. You want me to break it down? Uh, it like you right under your green uh, page. I think I missed it. Right. Yeah. First thing. Yeah. Well. So, uh, I guess while you're reading, just to explain, with last year's budget, we uh, we had budgeted in capital. For the purchase of a vehicle, actually we purchased two vehicles. We ended up um, having the one vehicle that was totaled out. And insurance didn't pay for a total replacement of the vehicle, nor all the equipment. So some of that money that was budgeted for a new car actually replaced one of our total cars. Uh, we did have enough money to buy a new car, however, and that is something we did purchase. However, we don't have the money to I completely upfit that car. Yeah. So there's a new car in the lot, but not upfitted. So from thirty eight thousand fifty one dollars has to be included in the budget this year. Otherwise, you have a car you can't use. Correct. Um, do you have a bunch of? Do you have any uh, figure of what's left in that? No, you, but I I can go get it. Capital. Uh, well, I don't see any way how we can't budget for that. I mean, there's no sense in having a car sitting in line can't use. <laughs> and our plan always was to buy one vehicle a year just so we don't have to stuck having to buy two or three in one year. Yeah. Our, our last S, um, one of our SUVs that we bought back in 2017. Um, I, I told the mayor just to let the rest of the committee know. Um, it has uh, quite a bit of miles on it. Uh, 100,000, 121,000. That's miles on the car. That's not engine hours on your car. You can multiply that by at least four from idle time. Uh, so that car recently just went to the shop, had a water pump. A uh, problem that cars had, uh, you know, issue after issue just with the amount of hours on it. Uh, I spoke to the mayor moving ahead with replacing the water pump on that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the engine is going to be fine. You won't know if the engine's fine until you replace the water pump. So uh, it is uh, an essential car, though. We're going to need if we do have the SRO because we don't have the cars to have a new car out there, the amount of uh, cars put up there. Uh, and then if there's uh, road jobs or whatnot, we usually keep those old vehicles around um, for that. So, Andrew, if we put the 38000 in, are we to the point that we have to start cutting the budget to be under cap? 
Yes, ma'am. They'll make it easy for us. Yeah. <laughs> they, they try as hard as they can to no, not make it Let's see what enough. Shannon brings back because you still have just, you got, you got 23,000 there too, right? Under cap? Under the, well, so I just added back in the SRO. Right. That put us $1,100 under cap. 1100 under cap. So if I, do you want me to put in the 38000 let you know the exact amount that would have to be cut? Yes. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> and it's 38000 even that we're doing? $38,051. The $51. <laughs> 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 we don't want to sell ourselves short, right? No. <laughs> okay. Um, Or fifteen hundred dollars. I'm sorry. I, the eleven hundred dollars. The 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 twenty three thousand was the appropriation cap. I had them reversed in my mind. Oh, okay. We're we're fifteen hundred dollars over the levy cap right now. So the fifty nine thousand that's on your sheet was the levy. I had them reversed. I'm sorry about that. Um, so we're fifteen hundred dollars over the levy cap right now, and we're still the eleven hundred dollars under the appropriation cap. What do we got cut? 1500 1500 right now. So if I said, let's put $83,491 into another police vehicle, are you telling me we'd have to cut $86,000 from the budget to buy a police car? Rich, wow. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? Huh? I see you nodded. Is that yes? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good with bad news. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand how they how they expect us to operate. You know, they want you to have a responsible budget, and they're forcing us to do irresponsible things. Yeah, if you did eighty three thousand four ninety one, that would put you eighty six thousand seven hundred sixty seven dollars over the tax levy balance. And here's the real irony: I don't know. Where we can cut fifteen hundred dollars in the budget, fifteen hundred, not eighty six thousand. <laughs> Without, I don't know. Like, let's just shut the electricity off, maybe, or something. I, I don't even know what to do. The, the only other thing that we do have going for us right now is the interest um, line. Again, it's I, I caution you with the interest line because that's essentially how we were regenerating our fund balance. If we were to, we could right now we're budgeting one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in interest in the current year. Last year we had earned four hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. the The crux of this is is that the reason that we had that much in interest was because of the money that we took out for the municipal building that's sitting and gaining interest for us right now. So we're going to be spending that. Um, I don't know what the most recent number is for the interest. We just rolled it over. And I'm not exactly sure what she gave us. I want to say that last time you had said it was already at like 70000 or something. Yeah. I think so it's five can, something. We can, percent, increase, yeah. we can increase the budgeted amount for that interest slightly. I wouldn't go wild on it because um, you don't want to expose yourself if that's how we're regenerating fund balance currently. But, but I guess my point, like, I'm just talking to the police department. That's what I take care of. Paul takes care of the road department. We're not even talking about buying them a piece of equipment. And it's not going to get any better by next year by not buying a police car or buying equipment. Right. It's going to going to be worse next year. Saying we need two trucks and two police cars. How are we going to get under cap? You know what I'm saying. You know, I, I, you know I, what I'm I, saying. I completely understand. Like, like I, how would we? How are we going to address this problem next year? I I don't know how we could buy one police car even next year if we had to live by these numbers. So here's where we begin. 
They mm -hmm. figured in 3% increase salary increase, lower that to zero. And we'll start from there, see how much we can afford to pay our employees. Hey, I mean, I'm saying here 15,000 there, yeah, 2,000. But I'm just saying, I, it I don't ends get, up. I, but I don't know how you're going to get the 86,000. And that's just for one department. Yeah. What about him if he wants to take a truck or a tractor or something? Well, we were only talking half a truck. Yeah, and a box. We'll start, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. we'll start there and work we're, our way up. I'm getting uh, the number from uh, Shannon with what's left from last year's capital for vehicles. Uh, that outfit of that vehicle would only be about $14,248.19. So that's oh, so a lot less have, than the 35. So we shouldn't have to cut 1500 to do that. <laughs> Uh, being that she said that there's 21 she only has to cut 750 dollars now right <laughs> so looking at non-contractual and again this is i don't have the exact breakdown of it because it's affected by what what gets charged to the sort utility um mm -hmm. but looking through what I have here, just give me one moment, I'll walk through. Auto load. Yeah, it's actually less than seven hundred. Yeah. 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 All right, so we'll keep that in the back of our mind and figure something out. So, <clears throat> next year, 2025, we're going to get some tax from the, I'll call it co owns affordable housing. $100,000. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's under $100,000. $100,000. Okay. All right. So, we're going to get an extra that will cover almost a, a police a car. car right? Yeah, but, or a truck. Yeah. yeah. Not going to. And not going to help us now. Anything right? unfortunate Joe comes in with is 200 grand now. Um, well, uh, what, what happens if we really needed a truck? Like, how would they tell us we have uh, to cut everything out of the budget to get just to buy something? A bond. Yeah, yeah right. Actually, we, we always got the bond action. Right. Yeah. That's what Andrew was saying earlier, right? Yeah. Without getting into the details, you can always bond. But if you're going to bond, bond. Yeah, get everything you need. That's exactly what we had to do the first when yeah. we got back. That's, sure. what that's what we're trying to avoid with this. Yeah, yeah, mean, right. You're trying to be responsible. You get paid, penalized for it. <laughs> Andrew, what's our bond uh, repayment every year? I saw that figure somewhere. Sure. And what interest are we paying on? You know, out of the hundred thousand or whatever it is. Bond principles two fifty five no ninety six thousand interest on bonds three hundred and sixty six thousand we have seven hundred thirty two thousand in debt yeah so it's going to be eight nine hundred thousand. But, you know, yeah, but what do you do? Bond every year? I just know. buy a car or buy a truck? I mean, that's what's so absurd here, right? So currently, <laughs> your payment for your bond is two hundred fifty-five thousand dollars, and you're paying uh, five percent interest currently on the newer bonds, um, which it changes throughout the, the life of that bond. It goes down as low as four percent. That's not until twenty thirty-six, so a long ways off. Um, and then it goes back up to 4.125 in 2040 and then fluctuates a little bit back and forth from there. Um, 
and then you have your bonds that were issued in 2011, um, they're at 4%. Yeah. We're basically like living like a federal government now. Our right. great grandkids would be paying for a, right. a dump truck and a police car. And, <laughs> and actually, let's pause the conversation for one second because it's further in our package. And, and I'm going to start off by saying IT costs are completely out of control. Right. They're out of whack. Uh, completely out of control. I can't believe. Well, I'm seeing $650. The, the, by, uh, but at least yeah. the numbers that we're almost forced to do what's in our packages this time around. Mm -hmm. Several of those, yes. Right. But is that, are those numbers anywhere in here? Um, I we met with John Paul the other day and tried to do a breakdown of like the number of PCs. Yeah, cetera. no, right, right, right. Um, and it, I think we're going to need twenty thousand for that line if we do all of those required right. things and get the three computers, the police department. Right. Needs, I think so. There's twenty, Andrew. That's not even just added to your line. Upgraded PC six hundred fifty dollars something more. So. Well, I, I don't know if, if that's the one that I was specifically the one that I thought was, and again, per user one hundred and twenty dollars a year annually. Mm -hmm. You know, and then all these other computers were what four thousand and and change and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the rugged ones for the police department. Right, forty one hundred. That and yeah. So I mean, I just was kind of reviewing that before. So that's not even in here either. And I'm judging from reading John Paul, our IT guy's stuff, it didn't really sound like there was an option about not moving forward with at least, I'm not saying about the laptops per se, right. but, but the rest of it almost sounded like it had to be done you know, because we can be compromised at any given time now. I did talk to him about we have to have that emergency response plan per the insurance company, and he thought they had to be separate, so he was estimating $3,000 each, I asked him if I can get permission from the insurance company, can we combine them? And he said, yes. So I'm hoping that's three instead of two. Rich, is there any co-ops out there to buy computers for police departments? Any type of, I don't know where, uh, and I wish you guys would include me whenever you meet with John Paul. I'm the liaison. So next time, please let me know. <laughs> the, the price, uh, I mean, I don't know. I didn't even, I mean, that's either our vendor, so I don't even know what to look for and what have you, uh, you know. Even. I think before we move on this, I think we need to talk to somebody at the county level, see if somebody there can help us. Because it's absurd, but I'm seeing, I mean, for 23 years, I worked on schools and library program, and these figures are just way out of line. Well, looking at all the other police departments and what they pay, it's, about par for that. Um, the one thing that we get that um, we didn't have for a very long time was the instant service. As far as when we have a problem, it's fixed right away. Um, and we can't afford to be down when things go down. Now, everything is all online, uh, complaint wise, fingerprinting wise, um, our records management. Uh, it, it's something that I do value with, uh, with this service. Uh, as far as prices on the, the computers, I, I I don't know though. I I, I could. No, we he, have he does he though. does uh take care of uh, Phillipsburg now, um and uh, Bridgewater, some other departments, uh, Belvedere. So you know, if I got numbers from that, would be the same ones that we had. So, Chief, without. And I'm just throwing this out here because I'm looking at a number and seeing that we're in crunch time. Uh, and as valuable as they are, can we learn to have life without automatic license plate readers? Uh, the license plate readers aren't costing us any more money. Well, I just see a line item here for 131000 That That's a grant. That, that's a grant. that is a grant. Okay. All right. So in actual in actuality, that grant is going to be saving us because our server for our license plate reader has needs to be replaced. So if uh, in that grant I wrote in to have a uh, cloud storage as opposed to buying a new server, 
and that grant is paying for that. So for I believe three years. Um so yeah, we could get rid of if we got rid of all the police, the license plate readers, you know, it's just a lot of equipment that we bought and now we can't use. Right. So, well, I was just I didn't see that it was a grant. I mean we're 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 digging deep up here and so that number stuck out to me that maybe we have to go back to the old fashioned way. <laughs> That's the choice. You know, every year I say the same thing. We cut the budget so much we count post it. And then the second thing I always say when we get to this point, it's like playing whack a mole. Every right. time whack a mole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I just, you know, in our conversations here today and trying to come up with this, yeah. I mean, I can already see a, an area that's going to get beat up a little bit. And, and the bottom line is it, it, you can beat it up now, but it'll cost you way more. And, in the well, long run, that's what they're doing. They're forcing you to, to either cut to the bone, which we already are, or to just charge it. Right. Bond, charge it. It's almost like they want you to just keep bonding <laughs> and just be in debt forever. That's what it seems like they want. I mean, that this is crazy what we're talking about. I see a line item here for and part you. of the problem is is we we're probably been too conservative fiscally. I hate to say that way in the past mm -hmm. because if we right. had the budget up more, we'd feel how to no. spend uh, more. Well, I've been saying that right yeah. along over yeah. the twenty yeah. years. Conservatism did not become our best friend. No. Mm -hmm. You know, gasoline at sixty six thousand four hundred dollars. You know, gas just went up. Yeah, it's not going to go gallon. down. Yeah, it's, right. yeah so, I hear it's up you know, to a long haul here, too. Yeah, depending yeah. on what happens this year, next January, it might be much worse shape. Right, right, yeah. Year. So. Buying $250,000 electric cars. <laughs> and telling us you still have to stay under <laughs> Uh, and, and again, it's, I mean, we're only in month four, four, but the three, the court numbers aren't looking promising. Our contribution to that looks to be like it's going to be bigger than last year. No, that's not good. So how do we record that? Well, I that I, can only be rectified know. on the state legislature level. There's, there's, we can't. I don't know. Well, Rich gets around and complaining every municipality, right? They, they, they lose money. money. Huh? Yeah, nobody's making there's money. There's got to be somebody. It's funny. Everybody money. always says that they just do it to make yeah. money, and every municipal court's going to lose the state. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. They, they, they they make make it, it, it is a money maker for yes, the state. I mean, right. it'd be nice if they at least made court costs break even with the courts. That's all. I'm not, don't make no money. Let us pay for the court, then take right. a percentage off the right. top. Right, Like right. a profit. Right. Like, like, like a shareholder. But we can, <laughs> we can talk about all that I want. That's not yeah, happening that's not until, happening. right, at least not this year. Maybe some better minds will get something worked out there. Andrew, our farm leases, does that money go into open space or that, does that go into our operating I believe those all into open space. Yeah, space. Open, open space. space. Yeah. Does it have to go to open space? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, can you find that out? I can definitely. Well, find that actually, out. I think Frank Pinto has said yes, but what we are doing yeah. is taking the mowing, the mowing right, the, the mowing out yeah. of that. Yeah. So, so this kind of run its road. Right. Yeah, I mean, just to. But our farm leases. Uh, isn't it over 50,000? 50, 56, 59,000, something like that. And I think we're only taking uh, out of uh, open space around 29,000. No, right? I think it's more like 43 or 44. What did I see? Right, yeah, that's about right, right? 43, last 40, year was 44. 44. <laughs> so there's not much wiggle room there. I mean, I don't see, well, other than the annual contribution that we have to make to the employee situation, you know, that number's pretty solid. 
I don't know what the lease numbers are going to turn. When do they go up? Then we take money out of there, like we bought the equipment. And the There's some shortage, yeah, yeah, just bits and pieces that had to be used for. Yeah. Right. Um, right now, I'm not seeing any of the needs to be able to come out of that. Should be that substantial anyway. Right. right. Or repair or something. Right. Right. Could we bought two machines in a like two years, right? Uh, yeah. And I imagine there's some hours getting wrecked up on them bad boys. Oh, yeah. Um, it's only some way, you know. I mean, right, right. You go out there. By the time they can start mining, they can start with a load. Like, start again. By Thursday, they're mowing right. like they have mowed When our leases go oh, back yeah. out. That's uh, great. Frank had said uh, we'd probably get together in like June. All right, so next year. And next year, we're going to do the five year gig. So, so it might uh, be. We're going to bring that up at executive session. Okay. I had got it. Uh, discussions with Frank and the same thing. So okay. we'll discuss that later. Well, right now, I guess we're at a. Did you did you re take out the uh, reduce that thirty eight thousand down by the port, fourteen thousand? He said he found. 14, yeah, fourteen. Fourteen out of thirty eight fifty one. What reduce it by fourteen? How much, Rich? Fourteen thousand. Hopefully, then we don't have to cut anything. Well, a couple hundred dollars. Fourteen thousand. <laughs> um, quick question. Uh, the IT for the computers was brought up. That'll be a capital item. Does that have to get added in? The 20000 for that? Nice. Uh, yeah, it sounds it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, Chief, again, not to be picking on your budget, but I see a number here that's probably not. because it. you like me, I understand. No, I, <laughs> no, no. Well, I see your. Um, Miscellaneous other expenses. Uh, we adopted seventeen thousand and change. You use seventeen thousand and change. Those, this year proposed at ninety thousand and change. Those numbers are reversed. It should be eighty five thousand. The seventeen thousand belongs in the police car. Oh, okay. Yeah, those numbers are reversed. Yeah, but oh, oh, yeah, oh both so, of them. got it. Yeah. Okay, so even still, okay. if I needed to. Steal ten grand, steal, and I yeah, that's the word steal. Um, from eighty five to oh no, there's no. Yeah, we only went up right five grand. Uh, it's twenty. Uh, he expended seventy three. You bid eighty five, so you were seventeen off. So I guess if we had to knock that one down ten, that's one spot. It'll still leave you. 80,000 in miscellaneous and other expenses. Uh, not horrible. Did you take that out then, Andrew? The 10,000? No, the 14,000 he was talking I, I took that out. So, so what do we have to cut out of the budget now? No, he's looking at Okay, so just so we're all on the same page. Right now, this is with the 22,000 in for the SRO. Right. This is with the thirty-eight thousand fifty-one less the fourteen thousand that he had said, 14. and the twenty thousand with the IT for the computers. And right now, yeah, well, we are seven thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars over the tax levy cap. How much? Seventy-three. Seven thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars. We went from 1,500 to 7,300. We put the 20 in and we took 14 out. Yeah, yeah. Bob, I know this isn't helpful, and I don't know if we can include it, but we do have that grant we can apply to through the insurance company to offset some of those required. We thought that'd be about $3,100. What's, what's that for? Um, the insurance company offers a little grant if you're doing these mandatory improvements like the multi-factor authentication. So we we might be able to put that line in as 17 or 16 even instead of adding 20 to IT. So we would still have to, I mean, without knowing that we're getting the grant 100% know. and knowing the amount, we really can't put it into the budget is the problem right now. Yeah. So and that that is an estimate, you know. We did did we we had some left in IT last year. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think I'd be comfortable if you guys, you know, if we went to seventeen. They basically said I I fill out a piece of paper and I submit it to them and they reimburse us. 
that 3100 it's just with you don't feel comfortable doing yeah. that no not without no without that it's guaranteed. real money yeah. yeah um i mean we could always it's, and we're at zero percent ratios too yet right the zero percent is in yeah in this right he's now. in this oh it's no, in he's in no oh, it's no, not. no it's not no it's not no it's not, no, it's not. um my finale oh. Uh, only because I saw it a little while ago, and I know that we've had some, I won't call them heated debates over the years and things of that nature, and it's only going to pick up a certain end. But without joining the Highlands, weren't they just offering a respectable amount of money in relationship to stormwater and things of that nature <laughs> without well, having lots of hoops to jump through? There, okay. The there are monies available through the highlands, but well, they're available now, even with our position with the highlands. So that those grant monies for stormwater compliance, exactly. Right. Um, in fact, we I think we just asked for fifty thousand dollars in uh, via a letter to them within the last month. So you know, we pull our office on behalf of the town. On behalf of the town, yeah. okay. And, and we fully expect to get to, to get it to get that. My the twenty three thousand that we're budgeting this year for the stormwater require the uh, uh, upgrades and things yeah, to the bases and stuff, which we have to do. Um, painful. It's it it is, but stuff. I I got the impression that that would pay for it. And so well, your fifty that you asked for is already earmarked. Is there another 23, 24, 25? Well, it's it's somewhat earmarked. Um, Donna Becker, you all know Donna. Right. I meant to reference her name all the time. She's kind of handling it uh, for, our, for our office, coordinating with the clerks and the DPW superintendent. She actually sent an email this afternoon to Lisa and to Joe for, for them to kind of uh, some questions we need answered, some data we have to get because we have a, a due date uh, with some information we owe the state by the end of the month, by okay. May 1st. So, so, But basically the number that you've applied for really isn't impactful on our budget. It's, I'm just going to call it soft cost for being in compliance. Well, some of it, it there's definitely some soft costs involved, of course. Right. Uh, but some of the money is clearly for improvements. I mean, you want to get new inlet heads. Uh, right. things of that nature. I mean, I think, Joe, did you sit, sit down with Don and kind of go over some of this stuff? I mean, as far as what material? No, okay. So, but yeah, the, the money you all you need to do when you send a letter to the Highlands, you've got to document what your intention is for what you want to spend this money on and kind of give it a little bit of a backup. So, it's nothing. Can we send a follow up letter? I suspect, sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Not that that helps us out here, but no. Okay. Mike, do you want me to forward you my five year plan of upgrading and hedge? I got it to capital stormwater. Oh, yeah, sure. All right. That'd be good. Yes. Is that the one that's in here, John? Yes. I can give it right to him. I can email it to him so he has it that way. Oh. Yeah, either way. Thank you. Copy to me. Copy or no? Good. I got another copy of that. All right. I've seen way too many copies of that already, to be honest. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay. Well, what are we prepared to do here uh, as far as trying to come up with $7,000 in cuts just, just to get to that point? Well, Andrew, how much of this that you've added that we can pull out and bond? I think that's the only way we have to we can go is to bond this stuff. It's it, it's kind of subjective with the amount that we have in capital currently. I wouldn't recommend issuing debt for that because it's a very small amount. Um, well, we we haven't even gotten to Joe over here. Totally understand that. Okay. Um, yeah, we can burn some of that up in a heartbeat if we oh, actually need yeah. to. Right? So, uh, I mean, right now you have the twenty thousand dollars for the computers. You have the thirty thousand dollars thanks to road repair. That we had talked about that we had so the outside last meeting. Okay. 
And then 23803 is the balance for the police vehicles. 74,000. So correct. Yeah. And then, yeah, DPW. So we'll keep that in the back of our mind, 74,000. And let's move on to the DPW and see. Mm. Can I just ask two quick questions? Because I don't know if we made a decision on these two items. The 2313 that you were saying for the uh, tax collector OE, that you wanted to reduce that 10,000 because the amount that you're expecting back in school, are we going to move that number? Or do you want to leave that as is? You originally thought it was going to be like 4,000. 4, it's going to be yeah. at 2,000. Right. So you, you want yeah, to take will... that out of that $10,000 number? Reduce yeah, 10,000. Right? Reduce the 10,000 by 10,000. What was it? 10,000 for? It was 10,000 was the OE line okay. for the that tax collector. Yeah. yeah. So, and that included the 4,100. Right, the forty one hundred. Right, if I took right. it out, it would be fifty nine hundred. Right, but, but they they are willing twenty two something. They are uh, what is it? Twenty two thirteen sixty. Right, twenty two thirteen sixty is what they want to pay, and I think we're going to read that tonight. Instead of forty one, right, one seventy one. Because the salaries for Eloise and Lisa, you know. They did not get any additional money for that. That's you know that's part of Eloise's job to you know get the bills out. So uh, yeah, there was uh, about eighteen hundred dollars. The only thing that we paid extra for was three hours, three and a half hours, which close to seventy dollars. So not so if I if I make that adjustment, then that brings the ten thousand dollar OE down to seven thousand seven eighty seven, and. Just to keep the running, um, that puts us five thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars over the tax rate of So, with that being said, can I pick on the chief again? And the ninety thousand eight hundred that is budgeted, just make that the eighty-five thousand that he got this year. Eighty-five thousand again. Yeah, and really hope that we can stick. We well, only spent seventy-three to eighty-five, so. That number is not. Oh, what's not accurate? With the heavy piercing totals in from the end of the year. All right, so the 73 is up, but did you think it surpassed 85? Um, I don't know. Probably All right, well, probably not, but okay. Well, then let's do it like this. Well, I'm, I'm not speaking for everybody. This is just what I'm saying. What happened? Do 2500 out of that and 2500 out of uh roads and repairs because there's a little bit we're looking for a little bit more on the repairs and maintenance there i don't know that 2500 is going to kill uh joe's budget i still think we'll be able to do a respectable amount of crack filling and this that and everything else Oh, but dang, I want the claw for the backup. <laughs> oh. And that's really only a very small piece of Joe's wish list, but it's the only it's one thing that would help us out significantly. And that's back to 13. Do you, Joe, do you think we can on road repairs and maintenance, if we just lose the 2500 and come down to 302,000? We can still figure out that backhoe attachment at 13.5. I mean, maybe a little less crack filling, a little less something. Or I know one of the things you were hoping to do was doing some paving up in the, the Heights area this year. Maybe it'll have to, right? Maybe it'll have to just hold off until maybe next year when we do talk okay. about a bond. But with that being said, although there aren't a lot of potholes in most of the roads around here until you get to the heights, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know that roads are getting pretty old. Those poor roads yeah. have been neglected. I but mean, terribly. But, but, but I hate to see you pushing something next year because what next year you're well, well, the same exact I've same been thing. saying that for years, but I think next year maybe is when we like the bull, we bite the bull in the old fashioned way. Do it like yeah. Do it like the two the two other items that I had on the uh, 
on the list there. I don't know if you saw them on page two, where the uh, the two radios for the cars. Um, and just an explanation of that is that the, uh, the county is uh, putting, I believe it's $3 million into the upgrade of the radio towers. Uh, and two of the radios in our cars will not work once that upgrade goes through, which they're, they're hoping to get that done this year. Um, and uh, if that switchover happens and those radios won't work because they're going from analog to digital, I believe, is, is what they're actually But doing. aren't they buying the radios too? No. no. Then what was no. what was us all inventorying all of our radios and things? They want to know how many radios are out there and they just... So they could potentially come and tell me that I, I'm going to talk to the... I need to buy 12 radios for the ambulances and the squad members? Yeah, the officers? But I believe that a lot of the radios that the squad has are the ones that they bought originally, or were they the, the, the uh, and if they are, those ones are convertible. Okay. The, the two radios we have are two new ones uh, that we bought, um, not from what they had given us, and they're not uh, able to be uh, switched. All right, okay. So they're not being, all right. So, all right. so let's ask Andrew this then. We can't put money in that we anticipate from a grant because we don't actually have it. We don't know we're going to actually have to buy those radios until they make a change. And that say that happens in October. And we just, at that time, have to come up with an emergency funding for us somehow. Like, do we have to include it in the budget if we don't really know it's going to be an expense? To the, to the point that you brought up, if you have to do an emergency, mm -hmm. you would have to raise it in your 25 budget. Yeah. So it would be. So we'd be showing out next year. You'd be telling me you got to cut your budget. Wow. Well, we've been there too yeah. already, right? <laughs> the other item was the Alcoa test. Well, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this spring, they're going to be completed with that. So uh, ours is going to be out of here. But at least for the part of the year, we are we're welcome to use either low pad or pohat in case we need to. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know that wasn't a positive, yeah, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the state's all going to feel about it. I mean, I pushed this thing and pushed it, knowing that it was a big expense, right? Um, and now it's come down to uh, that time. So it's a 25 and 25 you suggested. You, did you take that out then or not? You are $20 over the tax levy. Okay. 20 dollars. Amazing. <laughs> About $20 more of post-its out. <laughs> <laughs> you have a particular line that the post-it should come out of. <laughs> Well, we never put it in. <laughs> <laughs> we're back even. We're back even, but we still don't have some of the necessities. No. What do we have to have this done by? <laughs> so the next budget, I mean, next meeting, are you hoping to drop the budget? Take, I mean, just for take twenty dollars out of lighting, three lighting. I mean, we spent seventeen five. We budgeted nineteen thousand for it this year. Maybe it'll only be eighteen seven. What's that? The, the, the street lighting. There's there's thirteen hundred dollars to go. Twenty dollars shouldn't make or break that line. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Well, you think it'd be less, but yeah, solar and wind aren't really uh, inexpensive. Right. Due, due to rounding, it's going to be $21. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you are raining on the day I'll throw a dollar in. <laughs> <laughs> So then the other part, you're talking about bonding, you're at 75,000 roughly now. Yeah. What, what, other than that, 
thing for the road crew. What else? What were you? What were you hoping for, Joe? Was what? there any a big item? Well, was there any trucks or anything this year? Half of the pickup truck this year. Right. I don't know. They can yeah. bond for half of the pickup truck. But if you're going to bond, bond for the whole truck. Sixty thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. There's sixty. That's not counting next year. And then we want to to preserve one of the uh, big dumps. Uh, we want to put a body on it. Yeah. And, you know, a forty thousand dollar body versus a two hundred thousand dollar truck. Two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty now. <laughs> right. So, you know, that'd be a worthy. Uh, we have a two hundred thousand. Uh, 40, 60, 100, 115 with the thing. And I don't want to go too far ahead, but if you're bonding, I know this was more of a wish to plan four to six years. But if you're bonding, is this the year you buy the tractor and the roadside mower? If you're bonding, right. That's good dollars. You know, if I'm putting it all on a credit card, let's get it all now. So that we're not having this conversation four years from now. I think you're gonna be having it in twelve months. Well <laughs> well, that's your ten. Get the police cars. Don't even worry about one next year. Well, we're not getting one this year. What we budgeted for was only to make it make the upgrade, that get the upgrade one, 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 right? You throw another hundred on to the bond, <laughs> throw another hundred for at least one new one then this year. Hmm. Well, it's a possible road. Oh, yeah, we have to go up to 20 percent, right? For that, the bond is it 20 percent? All right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought it was five. five. No, yeah, I thought it was five. So that's fifteen thousand. Thank you. <laughs> so I had the fifteen. What, the other fifteen thousand we're back in that we have to cut again. <laughs> well, we do have money in our capital improvement fund. We have twenty three thousand dollars. That's what I was looking at. That's why when you said twenty, I was yeah, because yeah. it's twenty thousand um, dollars. Yeah, we do have twenty three thousand dollars in our capital improvement fund, so we could use that as a source. So when we tell him to come back next month with the budget that he's got, two hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars worth of bonds. Yeah, it certainly sounds that way. How long would this bond be? At three hundred thousand. I would based I would, on I, actually it's all on equipment, so it's probably not more than ten years. Yeah, if, I was, was going to say I would I would talk to bond council about that about what <clears> they <throat> would think because you might be. Better off going with the short term notes, <laughs> planning on budgeting to pay them off over the next several years. That might be a better option for you. Um, and it also gives you a little bit of flexibility because you don't have to, you're not required to make a uh, minimum pay down for the first three years that you have those notes. Again, I never recommend that. You want to pay off as quickly as possible. Um, but I think that they would be better able to advise you on that. Um, because going out for for a longer term bond, I don't think would really fit with what we're what we're doing for. I don't want to go at all. Mm. <clears throat> Chief, are there other vehicles out there that aren't the Tahoe type that might be a little less than a hundred thousand dollars? He gave us the other option. What was it? Was it like four? Was it a ten thousand? Yeah, the ten thousand. Right. Well, they they fall into a different area in our budget. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. My for the sake of time, is that what we're telling you to go with? I guess. Mm -hmm. You just go through and summarize the changes that I've made and where we're at. Okay. So, as far as changes that we made on the on the appropriations side. We added in the $22,000 for the XRO. We took down police OE by the $2,500. We took down road repair and maintenance by $2,500. We took down street lighting by $21. $21. We added in the $20,000 for the IT for computers. We put in the police vehicles of 23803. Which is the thirty-eight thousand less the fourteen thousand. 
and we are currently 8411 dollars below the appropriation cap. And we are dead even on the tax levy cap. You made up that one dollar somewhere. Oh. <laughs> Didn't you give it? <laughs> Cut it by one more and put a dollar in there. <laughs> okay. So you know what you need to get information for and let us know? I've, I've got everything actually I was telling. Oh, do you want to know the, the tax impact? Yes. Overall? Okay. Um, right now, so that's a 5.3 cent tax increase from 7.41%. For the average home at $272,000, that's $144 or $12 a month. And for each assessed, at each $100,000 of assessed value on a home, it's a $53 annual increase. So it's $53 for $100, $106 for $200, $159 for $300, and $212 for $400. <laughs> And that basically was not bought. That was just really with what we we were mandated to go up. That that part of it, we really didn't buy anything. No, you're. Andrew, how much support. did health insurance go up? I have an audience here tonight. <laughs> I like for them to know. You know that yeah. we have no control. Let me bring that figure up. Here. And the pension. <laughs> So the combined change for the pensions was twenty six thousand uh, dollars. The increase for the health care was fifty six thousand um, dollars. You want to know what that's an increase of based on what last year's bill was? Sure. So it's about a twenty three percent increase in the health care costs, and you have about a. You have, you have a 15% increase in your PERS and a 0.4% or 4% increase rather in your uh, in your PFRS, which is the police and fire. Um, and then you also had an increase in your insurance of about 10% by 18,000. So there was $100,000 of completely uncontrollable cost increase. Um, and basically what that equates to is about a... 1.7 cent increase for the average tax. I'm sorry, for all taxpayers. Right. And and last year the health care health insurance that went up significantly last year also, even right. more than that did this time, right? It's been it, it was it was worse last year, actually, yeah. but it's still it's no, but it's still very, impacting what we're doing today. Yes, it's very high relative to right. what it was a couple of years ago, right? Year over year. Okay. Yeah, sure. Vicky, it's good to see you. <laughs> Always glad to have a school board here. Vicky was here for years, and she uh, is now representing our township on the uh, Phillipsburg School Board. So, you know, that's two nights a week plus your committee meetings, and then with our regular school board, uh, seven meetings a month. Right, right, right. So, you know, Vicky, we're going to cover. The SRO officer for this year. Thank you. But how we're going to do it next year because it's twenty two thousand for the okay. second yeah. half of the year, or for uh, September through the end of the year, it's forty four thousand at least for next year, and we're struggling here. So we're trying to find some room in there, and mean. hopefully the governor will come back and give you some uh, some good news. Oh, yeah. So, but you got we got you covered for this year. Thank you. Is that it? Major, do you need anything else? I'm good. I should have the uh, draft out to Jen within the next few days for her to review. And um, once everything's done, I'll send her a copy. And then they hear an introduction. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Mary, Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and committee. Good to see everybody. Uh, as you may know, once a year, we celebrate, recognize birthday. Birthday is coming up April 22nd. 
And in our community, what we do with the middle school is we have a essay contest to raise the awareness of the students and to actually get ideas on something related to the environment. So again, my name is Barry Glassman. I'm a member of our Townships Environmental Committee. Some people may not even have known that we have an environmental committee, but we do we have it for many years. Uh, I may have been on the committee for, I don't know, somewhere around 20 years. Started when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if I may, we're, we have three winners from the essay contest here in the audience with family members. So what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about these three essays and the winners. And then if we can, we'll call each winner up, get a picture with the mayor and the committee, and we give that an award, a well-deserved award. So this past year, the topic that we chose to uh, give to these students to write an essay about had to do with what's called PFAs. PFAS, as they're referred to. They're also known as forever chemicals. They're really bad for all of us. They have been around since the 1950s. They're used to, uh, they're, they're used to, uh, for carpeting to make them uh, stain proof. They're used in cookware so that the uh, food doesn't stick to the uh, the cookware. Many other applications. And these PFAs really don't go away. They seep into the water. They seep into the food. The uh, One of the government agencies has reported numerous times that, unfortunately, every human in the United States probably, well, actually, about 97% of all of us have traces of PFAs in us. They cause health issues, increased uh, al uh, allergy issues, even cancer, uh, on and on. So it's bad. And we asked the students this year, what can we do to avoid them? And some of the answers we got were fantastic. In fact, I wish we could take credit, but just about a week ago, the uh, current administration passed rules making it more difficult to even use PFAs. Manufacturers are not going to be able to do that anymore. Alternatives are coming out. Uh, so I, I, I wish I could say that the three students had a, you know, an impact on that. But what's going to happen in the future, what we really hope, by raising the awareness of this generation, that hopefully somebody, uh, at least one person, one student, if not more, will find more ways to stop manufacturers from using those types of chemicals or making those types of decisions or finding a way to have even better alternatives down the line. So that's why we make an effort as a town, as an environmental commission, to reach out to the students. In this case, we focus on the seventh grade science class each year. So uh, a lot of thanks to the principal and uh, your seventh grade science teacher uh, for helping to facilitate and get this essay contest. We had a great number of students. I believe it was close to 80 again, essays that came in. And it was hard for the uh, committee. We had, to, we had to sit and read each one, which we did. And it was hard because there were a lot of good ones and we picked out the best three. So I'm gonna tell you 
a little bit. I believe we have certificates. Yep. Okay. And then you tell me where's the best place for a photograph. This so you should just do it there in the middle of the floor. All right. So let's start with a particular essay. The third place winner pointed out that food wrappers and food containers are an issue, which is true. All those, all the food packaging that we get that's in plastic containers or wrappers, it all has PFAs on it or in it. And unfortunately, that seeps into your food and into you. This person pointed out that there was an alternative. They're called Gen X chemicals that are different and they're probably going to be used now going forward, now that our government stepped up and, and said no more of this. What we also liked about the third place winner, uh, he mentioned that we have to motivate the manufacturers to not use PFAs. Well, our president heard you and, and the decision was made that these manufacturers aren't going to be able to do this uh, so much anymore at all. So our third place winner is Jack Flynn. Are you still Want to come up here? Yeah. yeah. And where would you like to pray? Okay, why don't we come up? Yeah, you are getting a fifty dollar gift card to gift the card to Target. Thank you. Yeah, you did well. Get a picture there with the mayor. Thank you. All right. Our second place winner pointed out that filtering water is extremely important. Buying fresh food and vegetables that are not prepackaged makes perfect sense. Avoid the brands of the manufacturers who are being difficult and don't want to stop using PFAs. That's a good one. Just don't buy their products. And overall, continue to raise awareness like we're trying to do. So our second place winner gets a $75 gift certificate to Target. And our winner is Julia Toledo. Got it. Okay, the second place winner has to give a speech. And our first place winner focused on taking regulatory action. There you go. We need new laws. We need to outlaw PFAs. Also, don't throw items with PFAs into the trash. Why? Because it's all hitting the landfills. The landfills, everything in it seeps into the water. Eventually, that's just getting back to all of us in the water supply. So very good point there. Also, our first place winner mentioned that there should be more collaboration between the scientists the agencies, researchers, and the manufacturers. That's what really got us as a committee, the idea that instead of people just arguing over what to do or what not to do, people need to get into rooms or tables, discuss it, collaborate, figure it out. That's what this next generation, hopefully they do a lot more of that than my generation is doing right now. So we really appreciated all those comments from our first place winner, who's going to get a $125 gift card to Target, Nick Russo.
Congratulations again. Congratulations again. Good job. He's embarrassed. Just on here. <laughs> so one more round of applause for the winners. We have a lot to be proud of. And again, thank you to the committee, professionals, everybody for allowing us this time. And we look forward to doing it next year. If any of you have brothers or sisters in lower grades, start to get them prepared now, right? You got the edge. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Good job, everyone. All right. Let's talk about the budget. <laughs> we talked about for an hour. We're done. <laughs> Come back with your tax bill and yell at us. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the budget. Uh, Okay. <laughs> Enjoy those wings, Jack. What is this? Good seeing you. Okay, I'm looking for a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from March 21st, 2024. I'll make that motion. Okay. Anybody have any questions, comments, corrections, deletion? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 I'll make a motion. We accept the treasurer's report and April bill list uh, and interim bill list. Anybody want a second? Second. Any other questions, comments? Do you anything pulled? Any items pulled? Roll call. Mayor Barson? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. McClendon? Yes. Looking for a motion to accept the tax collector's tax and SOAR reports for March. Anybody want to make the motion? I make the motion. Yeah. Anybody second? Second. Second. Any questions, comments? Roll call. Mayor Barson? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. McClendon? Yes. yes. Police Department report. Grant, you have anything you want to add? Nothing to add. Anybody have any questions for the chief? I see overtime is pretty substantial this month. We're still dealing with our officer at town on disability. Yeah. No, that's going to be a the, long term issue, too, it looks like. Right. I see that. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. I was going to say, I also see chief, and, and, and I don't know, and you can answer it easily. Under training, there's 12 hours of OT there, too, um, because I know that our, our our officers need to train. Um, it just worked out schedule wise that they needed to do it on overtime. Uh, they didn't. I don't think they did it on overtime. They were moved. Well, like they were on a night shift. They were pulled from that to go to the training, and then their shift had to be covered. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So, okay. I think that's it. Yeah. Like the rest of it. Of you got to rob Peter. Yeah. yeah no. Right. 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 Okay. 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 Roll call, please. Uh, just oh, we won't need a roll call. That was you know, he was talking about the. Uh, <laughs> okay. I got confused. That's it then. Everybody's done with the chief. Yep. Mm -hmm. DPW, uh, Paul, you given it since. Uh, well, I mean, it was pretty self-explanatory as to what was done. You can see that you know we are uh, they're into their summer hours because they come in early. Mm -hmm. You know everything's being mowed. There's been some you know obviously some. Uh, storm damage over the last couple of weeks that they've dealt with. Uh, there's been a couple of sinkholes too, particularly at the school, um, and just basic maintenance and stuff. But you know they're pretty much on point for where they need to be. Most of the equipment and everything seems to be ready to go, so they're in good shape. And I knew that Joe had to leave here. Yeah. Um, so just on that subject matter alone, I a lot of appreciation for the work that he and. Lisa and Chief 
uh, and Shannon and everybody did with the, the grant that we just received. Um, I know that Joe put a lot of time in on that too. And I meant to thank you for it while he, he was still here and public was here. But anyway, but now that's it on that report. Okay. And those are on summer hour because I see get, I'm getting my emails much earlier. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lisa, it's got some clerk before you have anything to add. I, I don't. I just wanted to uh, renew my request if you guys want to, on the record, authorize uh, Tammy to begin that pet census. I don't think we had a vote on the record, and it's worn out now, so it's time there. So. And Paul, did you say you thought we but, could? Yeah, did we establish a, uh, a number for that? We had estimated. Okay, uh, that's what I kind of thought. 4, 000, and I How much? Three to four, but I think it can be, uh, you know, absorbed in the current budget. We weren't adding. Was that included in what we're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we think it could be a call in or so. Yeah. <laughs> Add this in, and he's going to call back and say, okay, hey, take just, this out. Yeah, just so we forget. You got to do this. You're adding that in, take this out. Uh, is, okay. So, we want to discuss. Can we, can we include cats? When we go out to do this, they're doing the dogs. I might as well find out that they have cats as well. And it's going to take a lot more man hours to do both. Or aren't they going thing. house to house? But we don't currently license cats, so the licensing part of it would take a lot more time. So we can at least get a sense, you know, ask them. Yes, she will be documented yeah. just so that oh, we have okay. an idea. Yes, right. I'm sorry. Right. Maybe, sorry. Maybe that's one of the things that we stuffed envelopes with, too. <laughs> right. It's on the list. For, it, yeah, yeah, is it? Okay. Right. Yeah. So Lisa's looking for an answer. What do we want to do? Do we want to tell her it's okay? Yeah. That, well, if that's what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or, it, and, 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 yes, I, if that's what we want to do, but hell we're taking twenty dollars for post-its you know do we not do a dog census for four thousand bucks yeah i mean that's a fair point yeah well, i mean hopefully we'll recoup that money by them coming in and either we issue them fines i, I do not, or, well or i the, do believe that there are far more dogs than are being licensed but i don't know that that's a break-even number or anything right. like that i mean maybe if it was done annually you know, certainly right. not the first season per se. I mean, I mean, Lisa, what's the actual number of dogs that we've licensed? I think the number this year is somewhere around like 140 currently. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and I, I think we all know there's more than that, just one neighborhood alone. And yeah. this was kind of an effort to offset some of those, um, you know, the well, the best, from sure, the right? From the best, yeah. We just had one for almost but, $900. But I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm kind of okay with it. I know we've talked about it. But I mean, if we're, you know, that severe on money, uh, uh, you know, maybe we revisit it. I mean, I don't think we, if we talk about it for another month, it makes that much of well, a difference. Well, it's in the budget, so. Well, it is in the budget, right. right. Yeah. So well, you're saying you want a table for a month? And see what I, I don't know. I, you know, I'll defer to everybody else on the subject matter. I mean, if things are that right. I mean, I if it's in the budget, we should do it. Should do it. Yeah, yeah. I, you're I making agree. a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second that. Any other further yeah. questions or comments? Yeah. Lisa, you just mentioned we got a bill for $900. Yeah, it was just under $900. For what was done? Uh, for, uh, I think, two feral cats were picked up and they were neutered, vaccinated, and vaccinated and brought and back to back health. Off. I think we should not be doing that either. I, we don't I have don't a choice, right? Know, once please. once the ACO picks them up, I don't think we have a choice. It's all regulated by the state and nice. funded by nobody's them. claiming that they're their cats. I don't can, know if they're big on do that. I don't know if they're big on youth and I. Um, we'll probably charge more than dollars How much? Three hundred bucks for youth and I. Probably. Holy mackerel! So you save three hundred. <laughs> wow. <Well>, but anyway, <laughs> so I'm not sure that number. Yeah, but yeah, I've heard right. people say pretty highly. Cost wow. two fifty three hundred to use the lines at all, so that's a little smaller. Maybe it's not <laughs> okay. So roll call. Mayor Borsing. Yes. Mr. Bean. Yes. Mr. Tenet. Yes. Mr. McDermott. Yes. Thank you. Zoning code enforcement or anything? Uh, oh, actually, yeah. So, well, no. I mean, his report report in here is uh pretty efficient wherever it got to. Um. It came obvious, today, so it's on the yeah, obvious uh, on the extra one you hear. <laughs> you know, obviously our biggest problem 
and it would take a long time to explain to everybody that's been here. One of our biggest violations that are going on right now is Drake's join out and, on 22. Um, there's no health department uh, inspections going on out there. They failed. It's been revoked. They don't have a business license. They've been completely unapproved by the township. And yet the system seems to allow them to proceed. Um, so Jeff and everybody's working on, you know, trying to make them A, B compliant and or B shut it down, whichever comes first. Um, my suggestion is don't eat there. You know, there's a problem. <laughs> uh, but that's it on the zoning end. Anybody else? Do you have any questions or anything about it? Yeah, great. Sammy's driving. Um, the yeah. core report is Thank you. sad. I saw that yet yeah, again. Uh, it, it's yeah. not generating. There's a, a flat number to run the courts. And just by looking at the last three months, we're going to fall way short of revenue to pay for the fixed costs. And I, I'm not quite sure why that is at this stage of the game. I mean, maybe it improves over the summer and things like that. And, and again, We've all said that we don't make money on tickets, but at the same rate, tickets have to offset some of the costs of the court, you know, so there's a necessary evil there. But there's fixed employees, fixed costs, fixed judge, fixed this, everything that we have to pay for. So you hope to get at least enough revenue to break even. We're not breaking even. We're not even close to breaking even. So I don't even want to see us be even worse shape than where we've been. Um, but that's the court report. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Thanks, Paul. ACO report. So we had four calls for the month. And obviously a nine hundred some dollar pay for <laughs> And is she supposed to be chasing yeah, I was brown hogs around a, a commercial parking lot? I thought we were only doing domesticated. Yeah, yeah, because I thought the one time to, we talked know. about Fox and she said she won't get involved. Right, that's what I thought. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Although, if there's a potential rabid raccoon, she does take it and they cut the head off and do the brain test. So maybe that falls into Shannon's <laughs> not looking real pleased there. It's the only way to test for rabies, Shannon. <laughs> um, maybe that's the same thing with groundhogs. Could be. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking for a motion to accept the uh, police department, EPW, township clerk zoning and code enforcement court report and ACO report. Do you want to make the motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Mayor Bursting? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Committee report. Slowly, you have anything? I was just, did you get an answer back from uh, Open Space about the benches? Remember, I gave you that. We did not meet. Oh, okay. So we meet May 1st, uh, first Wednesday in May. Okay. Otherwise, nothing else is going on with, with them. Okay. Edit then? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we got the letter from the school district about the uh, $4,100 bill. And I'm in agreement uh, with them, the 2213, which is the actual cost of the printing of the tax bills, the envelopes, and the postage. And then there's three and a half hours of overtime that we paid the office uh, assistant and the assistant CFO, I think, put in a half hour. So, you know, the tax collector and the municipal clerk, you know, they didn't get overtime. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, it, it all comes out of the same pockets anyway. I've been saying that for years. And, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of okay with it, but I'm a little. No, it's not a big deal that they were beefing about it. There'd have been no expenses. They're the one to call for it. It should have been on with the primary and or the November, you know, to have a special election. Well, I don't believe, and Vicki, you can. Well, they couldn't wait me. until the November one. Well, probably even June was too late, right? November, you can't do bonding for buildings, correct? Right. Okay. So that's why you have to have a special election. Okay. But I was under the impression that that bill was for the November election, uh -huh. not for the one in. No, no, this bill is for the. Uh, this was for. No, no, no. This is for the additional tax bills oh, okay. that went out. We had to do a separate mailing for the yeah, tax right, bills right, right. in November. Right. right. In no, from November. From November. Now, I'll defer to Lisa 
did we get a bill from the county? Do they bill us for a special election? I mean, they eat the um, cost. They're billing directly to school. Right. They're going to bill. Okay. Yes. All right. So. So this is just this is for the uh, the bills yeah. and the. Well, like I said, come okay. out, it comes my, out of the same pocket. Oh, it was it's for every. They're yeah. in, they're in tough, tough. We're in tough spot. They're in a very tough spot. So, right. So you're going to deduct the twenty. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so we're going to give you what you said. You what you want? Yeah, you were the you're committee chair on that one, so you were right on that one. So the only other thing, and uh, I'll defer to uh, our former liaison. If you know, they got killed with the uh, new budget that came out from the governor. Yes. And hopefully they're going to get some of that money back. Uh, they're short one board member. And is it this month that you're going to interview? We're going to interview next week? This month. OK, so that's and next Wednesday. point for the following month. So I think we get 90 days or something like okay. that. OK, and then that's all I really have. you know. And if you want to uh, add anything, you know, your fearless leader never comes. Maybe she's watching no, online. She says she watches this online. I just wanted the opportunity to thank the committee for supporting the SRO because, you know, safety and security of our students at the back is our number one priority. And it's something that's so desperately needed. But, you know, we're in dire strait. We just, you know, couldn't find the money for it. Right. So we appreciate you doing that. And, you know, every little bit helps. 2100 might not seem like a lot, but you know, it can help out a program. Right. So we appreciate all your help, everything that you've done. Thank you. And I'm sure Rich our chief, is keeping his eye out for any other grants that might be able to be used for that. You know, who knows what 2025 will bring. Yeah, so and that's all get I some of that money, that 575 that we lost. Yeah. <laughs> what the 500 that we raised from the two questions in November yeah, got wiped out. Got wiped out. Right. And some. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. I don't know. Crazy. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm done. Paul, do you have any? Yeah, I do. Um, the Environmental uh, Committee, which Barry was just hearing, everything else like that, and it's in our packages. Um, but they've got some concerns that they wanted the township to committee to be aware of. One of the first ones Bob brought up is the notification of if there was a problem in Merrill Creek. And I guess the current process is to notify everybody via cell phone, but you have to be on a list. So you have to sign up and put yourself on that list. And he'd like a note on our website about how to do that if need be. And again, although Joe's not here, I know that we were also trying to talk about doing something town-wise that you would have to sign up for to communicate, yeah. but we'll worry about that one next time. Yes. Um, uh, they're also very concerned when the farmers around here uh, do some large spraying. And I know that they're spraying, <laughs> some of it's seeding, some of it's this, but they, they, if it was taking place around the parks, they think the park should be closed uh, to avoid drift. Um, but with that being said, and I don't know the aerial rules as well as I do some other rules, that's supposed to be taken into consideration when they spray about drift. I mean, that's one of the most important things. So I know that they have to notify communities and listen and that they're doing certain things. Um, but I think maybe we should reach out to the farmers around our recreational parks, be it down on Beatty's, Thomas Stewart, Stecker, to see it, it, what is being used and what the protocol is so that we have a better understanding of it. Uh, this one here, I think, is a, a, a real reach. Well, actually, the next two, but they certainly wanted to make us aware of it. Uh, groundwater quality. Uh, should be monitored. Obviously, municipal water is monitored, but there's a lot of Greenwich Township that are on wells. And I certainly don't think it falls onto the, and this is just, I'm looking at it today, it's just a quick opinion. I don't think it falls on the town to monitor everybody's well. I think if you have some concerns, you know, you call 
So one thing we can do there, though, is I, I meant to ask you several times, do you, who, well, who does testing around here? Maybe we can put that, recommend some testing company. Yeah, there's uh, Garden State Labs. There's a few. Yeah, there's there. a few. One yeah. in Milford, one in Clinton. Right, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we so, want to just put them on the website. We can so reach out. Sure. Because actually, I want to get mine tested. I haven't had mine tested in a couple of weeks. Right. So, so, I mean, so that, you know, and again, I believe groundwater quality is important. I just don't know that it should fall onto the town to monitor everybody's well. And uh, their, their other big concern is they're concerned about particulates, uh, carbon particulates being emitted from the trucks, be it just driving down 78, sitting at the way station, uh, going through town in general, the lines at the way station. It, and their comment here is they are spewing substantial amount of exhaust fumes that need to be monitored for, harm, for harmful content. I'm not quite sure how you would do that either. Yeah. Um, but again, they're just bringing uh, this up to our attention. That, that's some of the things that they're working on. And the last little piece is, and I, I barely touched on it with Brian, um, and I talked to Frank Pinto too. Um, both of us have kind of fallen off of our participation on the Musconetcon watershed. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, there's only so many meetings in a month <laughs> and so many exciting meetings in a month. <laughs> and that is, I, I'm not diminishing the importance of it. Um, but I asked Ryan if he would like to sit on that because I know he's big in environmental things and that's what he went to school for and stuff like that. And he didn't really give me an answer, but I told him I needed to research a few things with Frank because it could potentially come with a voting right. And I didn't know if, a TC member should be there voting or if Ryan could vote for the township in the best interests. And I think if he attends meetings on a regular basis, he would have an understanding of what might come up to vote the next time around. Um, but Frank Pinto said he could. Um, so if nobody has any objections and that Ryan wants to accept that, I'd like to appoint Ryan to uh, the Muskinek on Watershed. But let me get an answer for it first before we make a motion and, and oh, talk. I don't want to point him. He sits on the Environmental Commission already. Oh. Ryan Haggerty. Um, yeah, in relation to Jeff? Oh, it's your son. It, oh. it, not his eldest, but oh, yes, okay. it's his son. Um, so uh, I just wanted to throw that out if we wanted to have a conversation because I don't want to be doing something to appoint him okay. and all of us not necessarily be on board with it. Okay. I mean, next month you're having yeah, ne next month we can talk about it once he gives me because, again, you know, the biggest thing that we're concerned right now, and, and I forget what they're called, is they, uh, are, what kind of snails are they? Um, <laughs> but there's some kind of snail I mean, problem yeah, going on, good. you know what I'm saying? Uh, we need to stay on top of that, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's it on reports. You know, you mentioned the particulars from the truck. I, I'm shocked, and no, you probably, you probably know, the particulate pollution from cars is mainly from the deterioration of tires. No, I not, didn't see. Not, is there a report of no, uh, no, uh, not from the fuel, like you would think. Really? It's like, yes. It's more from it's more from the, and top. that's why they don't think battery powered cars are going to reduce it because they're heavier and it's causing more particulates coming off the tires. That's that is interesting. That's I, interesting. I, I, yeah. I mean, I certainly knew the tire wear was in the conversation in the yeah. mix. No, they they say that the. The cars are so efficient and the fuel is so clean now that there's more particular pollution coming from the tires than from the exhaust. Isn't that how about that? Or cars. I learn something right. new every day. Yeah, how about that? That? Hey, Michael, there's an issue in New York City that I just heard the other day with these electric vehicles are a thousand pounds heavier than a normal car. And these four or five story parking garages, <laughs> you load them up. Oh. With, so <clears throat> there was an issue oh, boy. Uh, no kidding. a week or so ago, yeah, with a, a partial collapse. So, oh, yeah, that's it. Mm. Okay, we're, we're, you're done, right? Yep. Professional reports, Mike. Okay, a um, couple quick things. Um, the 2024 DOT grant again. We, I'll, I'll just mention it every month. I know we're not going to go forward this year, but you know we'll have to keep it in mind for next year's budget and so forth. Um, uh, Beatty's uh, sections one and two, the bridge the valve completely wrapped up, so we'll be able to close that out shortly. So that's a good thing. Uh, Comcast, um, <coughs> obviously, they are nearing completion. They're, you know, I don't know exactly how many more weeks they're going to be <coughs> still out there. They still have, they have restoration to do. 
Uh, my yard, just as one example, <laughs> they have been back in, in weeks and weeks now. Uh, they have been fairly responsive. And again, I give credit to Lisa last time, and I'll do it again tonight. She really has become like the point person to for, for the public who are, you know, issuing complaints and problems. And, and some of them are not even a little happy when they send Lisa an email or what have you. So, um, so she's been fielding that. We've been involved out in the field with the guys and whatnot. So, uh, so that, again, they, they are getting close to being done. They're there, but still got plenty of work to do. One thing about Comcast, I'm a little disappointed, and I'm sorry Brian's not here because he's brought up. You know, obviously, when we gave them permission or authorized them to come into the township, I figured they had to dig holes and stuff to mm -hmm. run wire. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if it's even if it's underground, you got to dig to get the underground to shove the wire through. But nobody said anything about. And one's in my yard, just for disclosure. And I'm not really complaining about about my property. But they have these big boxes they're putting up. The box, yeah. I never heard them say a word about those boxes. Now let me ask you something. I guess really? is it possible for them to be underground? Like I assumed, if it was where poles were, everything was going to be on the pole. If it was where underground is, everything was going to go in those underground boxes. Why do they need these boxes? Well, above ground? because it, it allows them access for maintenance purposes. I don't know the, to answer your question. Could they put the box under? Because you know, if I would have known that at the time, it, in my yard, at least I have Arbor Whitey is covering it somewhat. But if, if I had no shrubs in the front of my house in a beautiful right. manicured lawn, and I woke up or came home from work one day and saw one of these, and they're at least like three feet by four feet by 18, 24 right. inches wide. Yeah, and very un, 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 well, I would have never. What I would have said, no, you got to figure out a way to put them in the ground. They should be buried or on the pole. Well, service electrics are on the pole. I I can mm. inquire. If, uh, I you know I is there any way we can go back on that to address that? I mean, I I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I know going back is always hard. Yeah. Yeah. Is it within the right of way? Did you measure? It is, but, yeah, it's, yeah. but the, we could give them permission to go in right away, but with provisions. We could have said it has to be all either underground or on poles. But I never knew they were going to put these big boxes in. Yeah, yeah their lack of communication. Their, their communication right from our meeting one their car, their communication, to the residents apparently yes, as far oh, yeah. wasn't really on par. Yeah, it's bad. That that is that undoubtedly is horrible, their communication. Well, but these boxes, I'm surprised I haven't gotten any complaints about them. I have. And that uh, wouldn't be surprising uh, at least uh, as well. I really yeah. felt feel we were misled on that. I really do. I don't recall discussion. Well, I guess there really was no discussion about it, right? No. It well, was, Ryan asked right. a lot of questions about construction. But and, uh, and not, they said we're only going to dig two by feet by two yep, feet and right. go down. Oh, and that you know, is we're going to we're primarily minimum the road, you know, stuff. We're going to use existing. Yeah. He thought they're going to use existing lines. I kind of did too, but even if they use existing, I figured they'd have to dig down to get to the oh, conduit yeah. to push it through. So I wasn't worried about the two by twos, but I feel very misled on the boxes and two. Like the communication was absolutely horrible for a company that does it all the time. They, they were bad communication wise. You want me to inquire? I think it's yeah, I'd like to be late. I mean, I, I, know, feel, I feel misled. I'm kind of okay. leaning Brian's way on the, they. I think they misled us on a lot as we look back. Right. Yeah, no, no, no argument. I mean, there's been, uh, I mean, it's it's been an up and down or a ride with these yeah, guys. But for some, I mean, think about it. Comcast, they're big. They're huge. They're big. Yeah, I would say so. It, yeah, they do it all the time. It's yeah. like it's the first, your first radio. They're they're, they're terrible. Now <laughs> the company's responsive. That Leon and stuff, whatever you call them, nice guy. Yeah. Maybe just a good front man. I don't know, but. Uh, I just think their communication was far absolutely horrible. But I'm a little this is, yeah, okay. I, I don't understand all the I can certainly stuff. send out an email to a few of them tomorrow and just say, hey, this issue came up to the council committee meeting last night. You know what? You know this uh, these boxes that you're installing at you know numerous points in a, in a development uh, are 
They never well, told us about yeah, that. Yeah, our, our outside of what we the thought was going to be house. They put it in. I saw them put the level on it. It looked level, but starting mm -hmm. to lean. Oh, so they're going to look horrible in people's yards when they're leaning. Oh, well, well, they so, always end up moving. So, I mean, you've seen everybody's with the electric that's there and service electric and or I, and so forth. The, the old the old ones. Yeah. So. Well, is there a way to reduce the size? Because walking mm -hmm. in our neighborhood, we've never seen a box that big. It's huge. You know? Like well, you I... How many wires? Yeah, are I don't right I, now. Bob, your description and length what is bigger than what right. I what we've yeah, seen. Like Walking around our neighborhood, I see three or four thick conduit. I guess that you call it sticking up. Yeah, right in front of my house. You know, <laughs> right. Yeah. So maybe depending on the number of you have one in front of your house too. Yep. Depending on the number of conduits coming up, maybe they can go back and say, yeah, we can put a smaller box there. They might have, they might they have they some extra bury. boxes that I mean, they want to get rid everything of. Everything was supposed to be underground or on a pole. That's okay. all they ever said. Underground or on a pole. All right. Then Mike, go back and say, hey, these green boxes are popping up all over the place when you said everything okay. on the pole or, I'll, you know. That's the same one that's in your yard? No, that actually is bigger. <laughs> Yeah, that's bigger. This look at this. This is Let bigger. Take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. than what we have. Ours are, are shorter and not quite as wide. Well, I don't care what the size. They never told us there were going to be boxes. Everything was either in, in the ground <laughs> or on a I got it. Well, yeah. Who, who's Alpha? I mean, what's Alpha? Well, I guess that's who makes the yeah, Well, box. no. Ours are, there's no name on the box. Oh, you know what? That box there, Bob? Uh, Mike. Mike. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> that's across the street from me. The strip of houses on my on her limit, mm -hmm. we had telephone poles across the street, and oh, yeah, I had the right. one pole. But my my most of the homes on my street have underground. There's two or three homes that have wiring from the pole because right. So that's yeah. across the street. So that is that thing is right next across the street from me. Yeah, they're right next to a pole. Well, I, like I said, I guess maybe it's a question. I'm not of what's thrilled about it now, but what's aerial? I'm telling you, if I had a nice, well maintained, manicured lawn. Well, your lawn is pretty well maintained. Yeah, but I at least I say. have an arbor vitae, so I'm a high in that. And I had this beautiful front lawn. Right. And I'm over work one day and saw that in my in the right away, I'd be living. I'm I'm shocked I haven't gotten a lot of more calls over uh, that. Okay. I well I'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I can certainly send them something tomorrow. And okay, last time. Um, and this is the I'll call it what I find to be the most interesting item. I just found out literally just the other day, uh, Bill Gleaver was out of my office to go over a number of different projects that we're involved with with the county, both in Greenwich and out and other towns. Okay. He brought up Strikers Road and this issue of this proposed traffic signal at the end of Strikers in 519. And 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 I just was made aware of this like a couple weeks ago because they they they, the um, engineer for the county, who's doing the design, sent me a letter in my capacity as with the Greenwich Township sewer utility to mark out the sewer lines that are going in and out from 519 and somewhere near the, the, uh, the intersection. So I'm like, what are they talking about? And I said something to Joe because Joe was copied on it as well. I said, Joe, you know what the hell's going on here? Excuse me. I said, because uh, it's the first time I'm hearing about this. And he's like, no. He's like, I, I don't know anything. So we uh, we then looked at it a little further, looked at the plan. They have the they have the intersection of 519 and Strikers Road as being in the township of Lopatcon. So now I just saw this like a couple days before I knew Bill Gleaver was coming to my office. So, and if, if, if everybody knows Bill Gleaver is the county engineer. So Bill comes and we start talking about this and I, and I show him this stuff. And I'm like, Bill, what is going on? I said, because I don't think anybody on the Green Council Committee knows about this. The township engineer doesn't know about it. And that can only be a horrible uh, situation once that thing gets built. I mean, you can have those back-to-back -back signals. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so he 
they wrote a nasty letter to the engineer reprimanding them for not keeping me in the loop as the Greenwich Township engineer, but whatever, that's ir irrelevant. So I just wanted to, and I sent Lisa some paperwork today that I had, um, which basically, it doesn't, I mean, it just, it's very preliminary stuff. If there's no design, there's no, it just, they're, they're going to be, it looks like they're going to be installing a light at the end of Strikers at 519 mm -hmm. to, in conjunction with the warehouses that have yet to be built in Low Um So we're going to have some opportunity to comment. I mean, this is certainly, yeah, and, and they're aware of that. And I, so I just wanted you, did, did anybody know about this? No. No, they yeah. just, okay. I was contacted, oh, this is a while ago. They spoke to Alex once about it and one or two of the no. commissioners. And yeah, my answer was, we're not paying a dime towards anything there. Oh, God, no. I oh, said, oh, please. Well, no, no, but no, you no, know, no. the one meeting we went to several years ago, they wanted us to help pay for the well, crosswalk. Well, that was the crosswalk, yeah. though. That yeah. was, there was no sick. Well, they're going to put the crosswalk but, in when they do this. Well, they should, right. But, but when they called, they said, we're, we're starting to look into it, we're going to do it. And they're obviously they said, and it's not going to cost you anything before you start because I would always say, "Don't, I'm not paying the time with anything for the trucks." Because so, you know, that's my view. Low pack built the those places. Yep. Most it's mostly low pack on people for troubled by that traffic there. They, you know, they use it to cut through the 78. Yep. They're the ones that are all backed up and having to pull out. So I said they should have included that, or you should have included when you just let the warehouses be built. So. The only conversation I had with them was, we're not paying anything. So there's nothing that needs to be done. It's just that I, when I looked at this and I like did it like a double gulp. I'm said, surprised it came up this way. I'm quick, like, <laughs> oh my God. Well, I said, oh my God, wait, the township, if they don't know about this, they ain't going to like it even a little bit. So, so I uh, will, whatever, I'm sure I'll talk to yeah. the county. And yeah, I'm surprised it's this far along. Because like I said, when they talked to me, they said, you know, we're probably going to do it. And they weren't even in the planning stage. Well, this is preliminary design. Yeah, yeah. And right now, and, if they could go to construction in maybe three, four years, I would think. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I was going to say, my, I saw that, and I know it's in scale and all that kind of thing, and it's small. A tractor trailer is not going to be able to make that left-hand turn if a car wants to go left coming out of strikers at the light without running over the pedestrian resting area, I think they call it or whatever. Well, yep. if, if you see that cars up there, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So do you want me, because I sent Lisa, when I sent Lisa the email today and I said, does, do we, does, does the township committee know about this? I sent her some some stuff. You want me to send it to you tomorrow so you can <coughs> read whatever for, yeah. for what it's worth? Can we okay. not want it there? Oh, can we definitely we can not stuff? want it. Whether or not that's enough for it not to be built is another story. It uh, doesn't sound I mean, like to, have, to have those two lights that close yeah. together on 519, but then we're like 500 feet apart, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is staggered like that, it will be well, they're out, they're other horrible. Their answer is going to be then we're by grass and then knock it down. Well, that's yeah. right. And then just let, let Dumont go straight yeah. across. Yep. We're losing another $100,000 in taxes like they do in the library. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, really right. So, okay, sorry not to bring no, up, no, no, uh, no, spend no. a lot of time, but this I thought this was important. Really so, uh, I'll send everybody the email tomorrow. And we'll keep you posted as the things we want. So that's it. Well, I've got, got two things for you, Mike. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Uh, the resident asked me, you're going eastbound on 78, coming up to exit three. Eastbound okay. on 78. You come okay. to 173. Okay, make a left or a right. Sounds like a song. <laughs> <laughs> Can we put a sign up that says all trucks this way so that they... Avoid going down 173. This sign is already there. No, it's about this big. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's a much bigger than that. There's two yeah. signs there, one to your right. I even asked, yeah. I asked to have it yeah. put on the back of the big sign with right. flashing lights. Can, can we increase that sign? Yeah, and well, put it in be. Spanish as well because you know, well, even to I get don't that, know the answer to that, or can we Rich, even to get that sign put back up when it fell down <laughs> from a windstorm and everything else? I had to go to who's the it's no longer the senator uh, that Doug's took. Oh, oh, Doherty. Doherty. Oh, Doherty? Yeah. I had to get him to get D, the uh, DOT to come out there and put that sign up. 
it was down for so long. Wow. And it and again, it's it's a much bigger sign than it was there. But yeah, I I mean I kind of think that sign's enough, but if we need to highlight it or put it to something else up there, that's fine. I don't think but you're gonna have to that's state DOT. Right. They don't care right. about the signs. No, no. Right. They don't care. The other thing, Mike, is the water project in Franklin Township. How right. far along are they? Did they go out for bid for that? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. The uh, they are uh we are well, the last phase, if you will, because there we the gas company and Mark lines out wrong, which caused the conflict, whatever. So, I mean, we're we're pretty close. Okay. The reason why I bring it up because Lisa and I had a discussion the other day about Haggerty. I I see it on the agenda, right? You know, we didn't discuss that during budget, but. So we're going to have to bond for yeah, that. We're going to have to bond for that. You know, and that that would probably be a separate loan bond anyway, because once we bond, pay for we're going to done the state reimbursement. It's reimbursed. Yeah. Right. right. So right. the only thing that I think that we should be having a plan for at this stage of the game is how's it getting to there. And I think there's more than one house there. I think there's two. Behind the Haggerty's is Overly's. It used to it belong right. to somebody else. But is that yeah, but I don't think that, that doesn't have a dioxin. Which township? That doesn't have a dioxin problem. Though. Oh, I don't know. That means no. I mean, it's Haggerty's within like 50 yards. I would one. be surprised. I know, okay. but Haggerty's is the okay. only one that tested positive. But I would think that for us to even be ready to roll on that, there should be some plan because well, it looks to me like it's going straight through a pharmacy. Th th this is the way it's going to go, as far as what's in my head. Right. It's going to go uh, from the end of Arbor Drive. Oh, and it's going to go down okay. through the access, through Haggerty's it's access, access even, through uh, Overly <clears throat> Field, down to his house. Got that's it. what, that's the okay. only way, because some that's a lot of that's preserved. Yes. So we can't put it anywhere else. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's yep. what I think, thought we were going to do. But we should start to have a plan for that. Yeah. For when, when the time comes. Well, you know, we had that figure, 800,000, but... I think we all think that might be too much. I mean, how how do we even get an accurate? Well, what, two hundred forty-seven dollars a foot. Was yeah, that at least it, something it's, like that? It's you don't even you can't even estimate it yourself, Phil. There right. are cookie cutter numbers that you just give a quantity, like lineal feed a pipe as one, right. hydrants as another. You multiply by the DEP's unit cost, approved unit cost. And you get X, okay. and then you get Y, then you get Z. You add them up, and that's the that's there. You go. That's the project. That's the, the budget. And it's it's a pretty hefty budget. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, it. I don't can't imagine. It's it's really uh, it, the fact that we've got to go through all this work and all this expense. To, to, and I know Jeff and whatnot. This right. is not an answer right. for one, one house, house that <laughs> far away. Yeah. Is boy, it's hard to imagine to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. This. So, done. Okay, I'm done. Okay, Richie, you probably don't have anything other than we go to executive. I guess we have more questions to you than you have for us. Other than progress now. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, old business municipal complex bid in a resilient community grant award. Well, the good news is we got a five million dollar grant from the state to build the municipal building. That's that's Poor, awesome. Poor, that's, Poor. that's awesome. Well, let me bring you half of it anyway. So. Like uh, Paul said earlier, thanks to uh, Lisa and Shannon and Rich and, and George Jean. and Georgine Drinkle for all their work and preparing the, the application Down. on Joe, uh, preparing the application and, uh, and getting all the all the facts together for Georgine, I guess, to present to them. So <laughs> that worked out. Uh, I guess we're going to have to talk in executive with the attorney to ask some questions about the bid at this point. Uh, but I just wanted, like you said, publicly acknowledge how much work uh, the employees put into it. Shannon, did they bother you two for numbers? No? Okay. I was going to say, no. I didn't want to forget you. If you no. If they had you digging up numbers. No, the three of them did a good job. <laughs> so. Without me. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any other community <laughs> comments you want to discuss publicly? No. Okay. Uh, the other thing in our old business, but I don't know if it's ever actually been on here, but Paul and I met with the rep from JCPNL today over at the Kennedy Mills development. And, you know, they've been having really some problems with oh. outages. Well, that's it. Oh, many and many times a year for extended periods. And they've been complaining, notifying me 
probably almost four years I've been hearing about it, with all it's about the same amount. Uh, and, and we never realized the fee for that, we think, comes from this station up here on Washington Street. Goes from over this the, station. Yeah, from that station. Goes over through the field, slow, comes goes down the village center. road, and then hooks into the Kennedy Mills half of it. The other half is fed from she thinks another station, but she, I don't think she was sure. Yeah, she was. And I think she was referring so, to Greenfields. I think no, you know, she, she yeah. said, well, you know, the line comes through. It's swampy. It's hard for us to service. And I said to her, this is New Jersey. You're talking like we're in Alaska, like you're right. trying to run electric to Nome, Alaska. <laughs> I said, it had to be swampy when you put it in. Why did you just put it there? So she does, she's not an engineer or whatever. She doesn't know. She's very concerned about it. I told her our next move, if we don't get satisfaction here, uh, is to notify the BPU, BPU. And, and our state legislators to get on board. She asked us to refrain from that. She wants to meet with her boss. They're, we're going to have another meeting in a couple of weeks, hopefully, with uh, her, her, her manager. And uh, she's going to try to get some people in from engineering to talk about it and see what other things can be done. I, it sounded to me, in the end, not that she was saying this, they still want to put the money in the truck. But those people are out. They're, I, I, they're, I got an earful about the same thing. They're out a lot. Yeah, a I lot. mean, it's yeah. a lot. And I, you know, I said to her, that's just an unacceptable amount of now. You just have to eat it and, and fix it. Wow. Well, so she seems very concerned. She says they are really concerned about it already, but she's going to go back. Hopefully, we're having this meeting. And she says, we're hoping to resolve it without just having to go any further. So, where's Stan Prater? Well, and, and, and I have retired. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And, and along with that, too, uh, um, and not that I know this solves the problem, they're about to spend $20 million on the JCP and L infrastructure here in Greenwich Township. Yeah. Oh. You know, so it just upgrades all uh, the yeah, equipment, right? Much switches, okay, yeah. huh? things right. so good. Tom right. Tom right. The, the so I lose power a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I used to lose and lose it a lot, yeah. like forty yeah. years ago. But they yeah. rerouted yeah. the stuff. Right. Your power is coming from West Portal. Mine? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I lose it a lot. <laughs> I don't lose it. Though. Anyway, most of my neighbors and have it trees between your house and West Portal. Right? Yeah, well, that's, well, that's the, the problem with this that goes through the wooded areas, through the fields right. and stuff. But she said we trim all our lines. Then they try, they try to say it was homeowners on New Village Road. I said, so you're telling me that Paul doesn't trim his lines? I'm dependent on him to trim his trees. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, they have a right of way. I mean, they do. Oh, they, do. Yeah. they have a utility. They come on your property to get to. It's yeah. hard to get to. That's what they kept saying. I said, you're talking like we're out in the middle of nowhere. She goes, well, it is a rural state. I said, oh, I think we're more suburban. I said, what rural? Go to Wyoming, go to Alaska, go to Montana. That's rural. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. That, enough of that. Anybody else have any old business? Yeah. New business. Looking for a motion to adopt resolution 4024, municipal alliance resolution, resolution 4124, tax team, uh, tax lien redemption. Resolution 42, 40, yeah, 4224, tax lien redemption. Resolution 4324, resolution support, uh, Senate number 725 concerning unlawful occupancy of dwellings. Resolution 4424, calendar raffle for Greenwich Township Historical Society. Anybody to make a motion? I'll make that. I'll second. Uh, I'll most of them are self explained, but the one is, uh, is uh, Senator Steinhardt is co sponsoring a bill for the uh, basically a squatting laws in New Jersey to give homeowners more rights. Uh, and that's what we're doing this resolution in support of that bill. Uh, with, all the problems that's going on with that. So, what is that? Roll call, I guess. Mayor Barcelona? Yes. Uh, Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Oh, I didn't. Uh, resolution, I make a motion to adopt resolution 4524, safe and secure grant. That's just putting the money from the branch back into the budget, right? For the police department. So, anybody want a second? Any questions, comments? Roll call? Mr. Barcelona? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Looking for a motion to introduce ordinance number 104, 2024, ordinance amending chapter 16, zoning section 17.2B1 to add microbreweries as a permitted use. It's the same uh, ordinance that we always had, 
we're just adding microbreweries as a permitted use because when the law was written, there was no such thing as a micro microbrewery. I'll so, make that motion. Anybody want a second? Second. Any other questions or comments on it? Roll call. Mayor Bersley? Yes. Mr. Bean? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Are we accepting the resignation tonight from Mark? Uh, we are. Oh, yes. Looking for a motion to accept the resignation from Mark Kelson from the CFO's office. I, I'd like to say that we're accepting that with um, regret. regret because he was an excellent employee. He really, um, and he, he said he would hope to come back in the future under a different capacity should something open up, but at this time, we needed to do this. So, yes. I'll, I'll second it and echo your sentiment about him. He wasn't really a, a, a professional employee and a nice gentleman, real gentleman to speak with. So, yeah. I, I say we accept it with regret. With regret. Yeah. Roll call. Mayor Barson? Yes. Mr. Beam? Yes. Mr. Kenner? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. yes. Lily, you want to make a motion to authorize the advertisement for CFO or time office? <clears throat> I would like to make that motion. Anybody want a second? Second. Any questions, comments, discussion? We can just do an all in favor on that one, huh? All in favor? All right. Aye. And what's, what's the dioxin contamination? What do we have to talk about on that? I don't think we have anything now, just those ordinances and the resolutions. Okay. Anybody have any questions on the uh, correspondence? We already addressed the one from the school board. No. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> I'll make a motion. We open public comment. Anybody want a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody wish to come up to the podium and make any comment? Bill Gillian, 13 Barnes Wallow Court. Uh, regarding the budget and this limit, did the cap that we are trying not to go over. Is there any way that we can postpone finalizing the budget to give you all a chance if you're going to, if the way out is to bond it, give you by some time so you can evaluate the bonding side of it. Because you're making a lot of decisions up here this evening just on the fly. And I just think you, if you could slow the whole process down, it would be beneficial. Thanks. Anyone else? I'll make a motion with post public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I agree with you, Bill. That's why I said earlier when we were talking, yeah, I said to him, do we have to have this done by next month? Yeah, I, but, I've got a question, but I don't want to ask it publicly. But, but, yeah, but it gets, I hate bonding for little things like that. I, I just. Well, and, and if you have to do that and you're looking out a number of years into the future to, to maximize the, or make the, the bonding and efficient, intelligent process, you need some time to think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, we're up here, well, what well, well, the hell, let's get three cars, or let's buy Joe a new truck. Well, I wish Andrew was here. I was going to say, yeah. probably the bonding, we could probably pass that at any given time. I don't even know right. that it's connected to the budget. No, it's not. Right. No. So next year, but, we'll be with the, but the budget, yeah. right, the budget, we have to have a budget in by no later than June, right? Right. So we don't have a, a big time on that. Yeah. Um, but the bonding issue, we could certainly yeah. carry on unless we have to restructure yeah. well, the budget to so accommodate what we're not going to get. Tell the state, well, we're over the we're over the limit. This is how we're going to fix it. Well, no, budget wise, we're within the limits now. That's what I, that's why I said well, after. Twenty dollars right, right. <laughs> yeah. But if we, but if we don't bond, 
there are certain things that we need that we're not going to have. Uh, you know, so you're going to have to weigh that. They, I, that's why I said earlier, they almost force you into making bad decisions because, and, <clears throat> and the worst part is that's why I don't, I hate the bonding because I don't know what we're going to do next year. Yeah. We're going to be in the same position. I, I think, in all reality, I think it'd be easier. We're raising the taxes. What did come out? What are they saying? Five point five 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 point yeah. four cents. I think most people would rather get the seven percent seven cent increase, have it paid for, and be done with it. Right. I, I, but they say, "Well, let us do that." I think most people would, would be more happy with just well, if they if they understood why that's happening. Yeah, yeah, but the state won't let us do it. <laughs> So in yeah. essence, our hundred thousand dollar police car with interest will end up costing us one hundred twenty. Well, do, do do they want to? You know, you guys can just all resign, and then the state can figure out what the hell they want to do. <laughs> well, they're coming and bond no problem. Yeah, <laughs> and they're going a lot more. <laughs> well, thanks for all the work. Well, guys. thanks for your yeah, comments you. and some interest in the. <laughs> You've been through several uh, budget processes <laughs> now. No, I kind of. <laughs> I mean, usually, oh, uh, you love it. Come on, come on, you do. Come on, this meeting is tomorrow night's on television watching, it's better than Friday night TV. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, does anybody have anything else? No, I don't. For a motion to go into executive session to discuss the personnel matter and contracts, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor. Uh, Aye. Aye. I'm hoping 30 minutes. Bob, do I need to do something? Uh, you might want to hang. We'll see. Okay, well, I'll make a motion. We come back in session. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're in executive session for approximately 42 and a half minutes, during which time we discussed uh, six items, three of which were contractual, one regarding the municipal building, one regarding the leasing of farmland owned by the municipality, and the other regarding the leasing of private land for public purposes. Three personnel matters, one regarding the CFO position, one regarding or increases to uh, employees of the municipality, and a third regarding the personnel handbook. No action was taken in executive session, but this time we're voting in a motion authorizing the amendment of the personnel policy to provide for part-time employees who work less than 10 hours per week shall not be entitled to paid holidays. If their scheduled workday falls on a holiday, they must work that day or make up the day within the week in order to be paid. That is the motion. Okay. I'll make, make that motion. Second. Any question, comments? Yeah. Roll call. Uh, Mayor, yes. Uh, Mayor uh, Mr. Kenyak? Yes. Mr. Beam? Yes. And uh, Mr. Yes. Mayor. Okay. okay. Anybody have anything else that we need to discuss? We're done. Second. Looking for a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, 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 I will be out of town all next week, by the way. Oh, oh. yeah, I heard you mention that. Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, Oh, nice.